Hey everyone! In this video series, I'll show you how to produce an advanced screencast, similar to the one that you saw earlier on double fertilization. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link to it below this video so you can check out what I mean when I mention an advanced screencast. Now, in this first video of this series, I'll give you a general overview of the production process. Then, in the next video, I'll show you how to plan your first video. All right, let's get to work. The question I'll address in this video is, what are the steps for producing an advanced screencast? Video production is generally split into three parts, pre-production, production, and post-production. You'll also need to distribute your video so your students can view it. Pre-production is everything you do before hitting the record button. Production is the actual act of recording. I'll also include mixing the audio of your voice with the visuals of your video here, even though mixing is usually considered post-production. I'm including it here because you'll do the mixing in the same program that you use to record your screencast. Post-production is everything you do after you record your video, and here will consist of editing the audio and visual aspects of your video. Distribution is the process of making your video accessible to your students, and here will involve posting your video on YouTube and or on a learning management system like Canvas, if your school or university has one. The video you're watching now is video one of this series. Videos two through six will deal with pre-production. Videos seven through 10 with production. Videos 11 and 12 with post-production. And video 13 with distribution. First, we'll examine pre-production, which generally takes the longest. Video two will show you how to plan your video. The first step is to decide what to teach by selecting your learning objectives. College professors will have more freedom here than teachers of younger students, but as much as possible, I recommend taking a good hard look at what you're teaching and why. For example, maybe you want to focus more on skills than content, or if you're a math teacher, want to focus more on math involved in financial literacy. You'll also have to decide how to teach your content. So you should select exactly what the students will do to achieve the learning objectives. Here is where you want to decide whether video is the best way to teach them something and how else you want them to learn the content be it from reading, speaking, doing problems, whatever. In video three, I'll give you a detailed tutorial on a screencast program. I use Explain Everything, so that's what I'll show you, but if you want to use another program, you certainly can, but how you complete the production step will be a bit different. In video four, I'll show you how to create visual content for your video within the screencasting program. This includes all the writing, like the word writing that just appeared. I choose handwriting over typed writing because students seem to lend more importance to something if it's handwritten by the teacher and are more likely to write it themselves. Your visual content may also include media, which includes images, like this one. You'll put all the writing and media you want to show down on a page in Explain Everything. I did this before I made the video you're watching now. It looked like this. It has everything that will appear in this video. If you fast forward to the end of this video, this is what it will look like. 
Laying everything out in advance helps you organize the content in a logical way. For example, I knew I had four stages I want to talk about, so I split the page up into four parts. It also makes overlaying this visual content over your voice much easier, because all you have to do is copy it into the page that has your voice recording, at the point in the recording that you want something to appear. If you're having trouble visualizing this, don't worry. We'll talk about it more later. In video 5, I'll teach you how to write the script. Writing a script is one thing that makes an advanced screencast more effective than a basic screencast, because you can put more thought into what you're going to say. Writing your script will also tend to make you more concise, as well as less likely to leave out important parts of your content. Recording your voice when you have a script is also easier, because you only have to read the script instead of improvising what you say. Here is an example of part of a script. What's not in bold is what you say into the microphone, and this is what will make up your voice recording or audio. What's in bold are what I'll call production notes. They tell you at what point in your voice recording to place written words or media. So the result will be something like this. One example of a fruit is the apple. The seeds are found at the center. You can see the stem here. You actually won't be overlaying your words and media until the production phase, but what you've just seen is how the video will look once you have. In video 6, I'll give you some tips on editing the script, particularly for accuracy, brevity, clarity, and consistent language. Perhaps most importantly, this is also where I suggest you confirm that your visual content and script sufficiently address your learning objectives. Once you have your script and the visual content ready, it's time to move into the production phase. In video 7, I'll show you how to record your voice, which will involve reading your script while speaking into a microphone. I'll give you some tips on how to sound clear and engaging. If you'll pardon the pun, it's not as easy as it sounds. In video 8, you'll learn how to overlay your voice recording with your visual content like when I made the picture of myself speaking into a microphone, appear just as I said the words, speaking into a microphone. The screencasting program makes this easy to do. I found that presenting content just a little at a time in this way prevents students from getting overwhelmed. In video 9, I'll show you how to speak into the camera so you can make what I'll call talking head videos. You've probably seen these in the first few videos I made, and you saw one at the beginning of this video as well. In these videos, you speak directly into the camera. This took me a long time to get comfortable with, but some people are good at it right away. Now, you don't have to make these to have a screencast, but I think they help form a stronger connection with your students. They're also a good opportunity to provide some encouragement, review what you've covered in the last video, and preview what you'll talk about in the current video. In video 10, I'll show you how to create a learning guide. This can take many forms, but in the simplest form is just a few questions at the end of each video that students must answer. I also provide my students with a partially filled in version of the visual content of each page. A kind of skeletal notes they have to fill in, so they have to actually write down most of what's in the video. 
Checking whether the students do the learning guide is crucial for their retention of the material you present, and I suggest incentivizing students to complete them. Because here again, students must do the work to do the learning. Passively viewing videos might be good entertainment, but it's a poor form of learning. Once you've created your video, it's time for post-production. In video 11, I'll teach you to edit the audio of your video with Audacity, which is free. In video 12, I'll teach you to edit your video with Camtasia, which is not free, but does have a free trial available. Both are available for PC and Mac. Using these programs will give your video a more professional feel. Together, they can remove clicks and mouth smacking sounds, remove background noise, make volume higher and more consistent, improve your video's pacing, help fix mistakes, and lots more. But to really appreciate the power of video editing and good sound equipment, let's compare some audio I made under three different conditions. The first, I used just a tablet with no external microphone. The second, I used an external condenser microphone, but did not edit the audio. And the third, I used an external condenser microphone, but did edit the audio. Here's the audio I recorded on a tablet without an external microphone. When recording your voice, it helps to stand up, which makes breathing easier and helps you sound more energetic. Now, here's the same part of the script recorded on an external condenser microphone. When recording your voice, it helps to stand up. It makes breathing easier and helps you sound more energetic. You can hear my voice is much richer and just sounds better. But in that recording, I did not speak very well. There were long pauses, mouth sounds, background noise, and I trailed off at the end. Now listen to the same exact recording, but edited using Audacity and Camtasia. When recording your voice, it helps to stand up. It makes breathing easier and helps you sound more energetic. Okay, much better. So you can see, or rather hear, that the combination of a good external microphone and some editing software can really help you sound your best. Of course, the better you are at speaking, the less editing you'll have to do. Screencasting programs like Explain Everything do let you do a little editing and to some extent fix mistakes, so you may decide that Explain Everything is sufficient for your purposes. Remember, the objective here is to arrive at a process that works for you. Last, we have distribution. In video 13, I'll show you how to post and organize your videos, both on YouTube and on the Learning Management System Canvas, so that they can be viewed by your students, and maybe even students across the world. Again, the person who does the work does the learning. So, before viewing the rest of these videos, select a small topic in your course to make a video for. One that only takes you about five minutes or so to teach. Then, as you watch each of these videos, actually complete the part of the production process that's being described in each video before moving on. For example, after watching video five, but before moving on to video six, you should complete a rough draft of your script. After watching video six, you should edit the script. If you do this, by the time you've watched all these videos, 
you will have produced an advanced screencast for your students. When you have, feel free to email me a link for your video with the subject line, Video Feedback, and I'll give you some feedback on your video. Okay, so by now you should be familiar with the steps involved in making an advanced screencast. As always, you can watch part or all of the videos again if you want to review something. Now, making these videos does take a fair bit of time, but do yield high quality results for your students. The first video you make will probably take you a while, but as you get better and better at this, which of course you will, they'll take you less and less time. Eventually, I think about a 10 minute advanced screencast will take you about one day to make. So stick with it, and hopefully you start to enjoy the creative process of video production. I know I do. Now in the next video, I'll show you how to plan your first video. See you then.